based on our readings and based on the video we just saw. Yes. So this is the information you need to walk. Right. 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 Have down. Right. It occurred on the evening of March 5th, 1770, in front of the Customs House on King Street. Customs House was a spot where they brought in goods and stuff. And yeah. Like yeah. the Customs today where they check the goods, make sure they're not smuggled and stuff like that. Five civilians, non-military people died. Cypress addicts, he was either an escaped slave or a former slave. They don't really know, okay? He didn't belong to anybody there, so they don't really know for sure how he was. Samuel Gray, James Adwell, Samuel Maverick, and Patrick Carr were the five people who died. Heavy military presence in Boston was a direct result of the British enforcement of the Townsend Act of 1767. There were over 4,000 troops in Boston. There are only 20,000 people. The entire city of Boston is pretty much in a bad mood because the soldiers are there and they have to pay taxes and they don't have a say. This is a picture of the Boston Massacre. Okay? What things do you notice? Now pay attention to what's correct, what's not correct in your mind, what the color looks like, what the artist's point of view is, so we know what happened. It was, well, whose fault is it in this picture? The British. The British soldiers are firing, right? Does it look like the English are attacking at all? No. Does this look like it happened at night? No. It's a day. What's, hap what's in this corner here? The moon. There's a moon, but it looks like it's what? Day. day because of the? Light. The, it's light. It's color. It's lighter. So it looks like it's day, but the moon's out there. It's light. Do we see Cypress Addicts in here? No. You don't see an African American in here, do you? No. no. All white. All white people, it looks like it's the British attacking the English, right? Yes. Okay. He basically took a piece of metal and hammered it out and then painted it in certain spots and then put a piece of paper over it and made copies of it. Kind of like a photocopying back then, the printing press. Remember we talked about printing presses? where they had to lay everything out, ink it yes. backwards, and then you had it that way. Same kind of concept, except he did it his own copper. Who did he want to blame for the Boston Massacre? The British. The England. I mean. The British. Yeah. The British. So would the, his painting and picture influence people to side with his Sons of Liberty? No. Yes. All right, look at this one. What do you see? What's different? Now, I know this one's not in color, but can you tell if it's happening in the day or night? Yes. It's not. Is it darker? It's darker, it's shiny. There's snow on the ground. Everyone's fighting. It looks like both sides are what? Fighting. fighting. All right, this is in El Zono Chapel, the Boston Massacre, in 1868. But this happened, what, almost 100 years later. Is Cypress Addicts in this picture? No. Why not? Paul Revere's was what? True. Is this a true account? Yes. No, it was used as what? Um, uh, uh, um, Propaganda, uh, right? It was propaganda trying to get people to what? Believe. Believe in the Sons of Liberty's cause to separate from England, right? Yes. Blame England for everything, right? Mm -hmm. Was this really a massacre or was it a mistake? A mistake. 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 It was a mistake. It, was a mistake. it depends on who you ask, yeah. right? And, um, According to this picture, it was a what? Massacre. Massacre because the English weren't fighting back, were they? In this picture, it was a misunderstanding. They're both fighting. I'm going to give you about two minutes 
to share your thoughts about the Boston Massacre. Was it a massacre? Or was it a riot? Or a mistake? And what perspective does each artist bring? So you're going to draw a Venn diagram for yourself, and you're going to compare and contrast what's similar about the two, what's different. Okay. There's smoke in each, and then we're going to discuss point of view. So as you're writing, think about the point of view of each one. And point of view is a noun, a position from which someone or something is observed. A mental viewpoint or attitude. What's different about this picture than the other two pictures we've seen? No moon. No sun. No sun. So you can't really tell, but it's a lot lighter than it being dark, right? Yes. There's an African American in the center. It shows the Cypress Addicts character, right? And it shows he's being what? Yeah. Shot. Shot or killed, right? There's more people on the ground, so more people were injured, right? Or, or something, right? There's more people in the middle of the action this time. Anything that's visual art. Paintings are wonderful things to give us an idea of what happened way back when because there was no what? Cameras or video tapes. All we have are people's writings of it, which kind of give us an idea. But then pictures also tell us what their clothes look like, what their hairstyles look like, right? Because in a writing, you can't really always figure that out, can you? No. So paintings help us look and see how people lived before the age of cameras and videos. However, they're done by an artist, right? So the artist gets to what? Interpret it, right? Are they always going to tell us the truth? No. No. So we have to look at it critically. Here's what you're going to do with this. This is your final draft page. But you're going to create an image of the Boston Massacre and take a point of view of someone who was there. has helped me uh, learn how to handle my emotions uh, and handle my uh, my feelings in a real and practical way nothing spooky um, nothing weird and you know nothing uh, mystical just in a real and practical way nurtured heart does not mean you don't have rules in your classroom it doesn't mean you don't have a classroom management uh, uh, system what it does mean is that the the rules are clear uh, and there's a clarity and the students understand if I do this, the consequence is that. If I do this, the, con the consequence is this. And so uh, with that understanding, um, you're giving as much attention as possible to what the students are doing well. You're giving as less, you're giving a small amount uh, or minimal amount of energy to, to the negative. This morning, a little first grader came in to work on the computer, and um, she had a book with her, and she, she showed me her book. I brought my book today, and I said, oh, that's very good. Can you read for me from the book? And she read from the book, and um, I told her, wow, that's what a great job you did reading. That was excellent. Um, you, you were fluent. You... You weren't choppy. You had um, enthusiasm in your voice. Um, that was great. And that shows me that you've been listening to your teacher, and you've been practicing, and you've persevered, and you are going to be an excellent, excellent reader. You're not only learning to read English or to, to speak English, 
but you're learning to read English too. Now, I might not have said the right exact words, but it came from my heart. And she went to the computer and worked. <clears throat> when her 30 minutes was over, she left, and in just a few seconds, she came back to the door and she said, can I stay in here and read some more? And that showed me that I really had nurtured her heart, and she wanted to hear more. My, um, my plan, and I'm determined to find something good to, to highlight each day to let the students know that they did something good, and I, I notice them, I see them. I know that as adults, we like to hear the positives. When we are told the positives, we, we are happy. So it's the same with kids. When we keep telling them of the positive things that they are doing, and it encourages them to continue to do so. Um, it was interesting to be there because there were lots of different professionals there. It wasn't just teachers. There were psychologists there. Um, and there were some principals and other um, school staff that wasn't teachers. So there was a wide range of professionals who were going to be using this, um, this approach in their lives. And that was one thing that was nice, was to get their input as well. Um, I would also like to give a shout out to one of our faculty members. When we're, we were there, um, they showed different clips on um, different parts of what they were teaching us. And um, the one clip that they showed, we were sitting there, we heard a familiar voice, and here comes Miss Mahone. And um, we all know that Lisa and Howard were here taping last year, um, but they actually used her footage, footage to help um, teach everyone how to use it. And I just wanted to do a shout out to Miss Mahone because it really shows that she cares about her students and um, is taking their approach to heart and the progress that she's made. And I just want her to, um, to let her know that everyone who saw her thought she did a great job and they actually want to come in her classroom and meet her. Um, so she has lots of fans. Um, and you made us proud. Transformation in me and the trans parallel transformation of the child. And that we need to download more, more and more every single day. Download the positive so that they don't feel that the reset is, is something like a punishment because it's not supposed to be. So I think we need to reset the program, if, if I may say that. And um, just clarify some more thoughts among our teachers and among, like, among ourselves as, as teams and within ourselves. And I think that's how we're going to be very effective on this approach. You know, when you are surrounded with positive people, whatever fear you have will disappear. Whatever fear you have Will, like, um, will be nothing. You wouldn't be afraid to try anything because you know that whatever you do to overcome your fear in a positive way, um, they will support you. They will only see the positive thing in you and you will be encouraged. But you know, it was, it was the positive energy there that makes you feel very confident, that makes you, um, that makes you wanna share whatever you have, I mean, whatever you have to say. The greatness is a choice. And, and, you know, preparing our students to operate from the platform of greatness is the journey that we are venturing on. It's the journey that we are taking on. And I think the Nurtured Heart has prepared us so well on that. And, uh, you know, reflecting greatness is gonna breed more greatness.